Panorama photography is a popular technique for several reasons. To get a higher resolution than with regular photos, which is handy for large prints. To post interactive photos on social media where the viewer can move inside the image. Or to get a surreal, distorted, creative view of a scene. Using a drone is the perfect way to shoot panorama, as with a point of view in the sky there will be no obstacles, even in the case of full sphere panels. With the DJI Mini 3 Pro there is the possibility to shoot vertical photos and tilt the camera 60 degrees upwards. This adds new possibility to panorama shooting, as we will see at the end of this video. First of all, let's see a few best practices to make the most out of a panel. The stitching software needs many reference points to properly align the images, therefore it's better to avoid scenes with a big portion taken by uniform elements, like water or the sky. In this case, the stitching failed. With sphere panels, the sun will always be in the shot. Due to the extreme dynamic range, it is very hard to expose correctly. It is much better to choose a day when the sun is covered by clouds, or to shoot around sunset or sunrise, to reduce the dynamic range, so that we can avoid burning the highlights and at the same time recover the shadows. The use of polarizing filter is to be avoided, as they react differently according to the angle of light, creating severe banding in the sky. I always shoot video and photos in manual exposure, but in the case of panorama, auto exposure can be quite handy as it reduces the dynamic range by raising the shadows. I apologize for the poor audio in part of this video. There is something wrong either with my microphone or with the power supply of my computer. I'm trying to sort this out. In any case, a big thumb would be greatly appreciated. We access panorama mode via the video photo button above the shutter, on the right part of the menu, through the icon at the bottom. The menu to the left will display four icons for different panel modes, sphere, 180 degrees, wide angle and vertical. Note that we can only access the panorama function when the drone is flying. We can now choose whether we want to keep each individual file for the photo taken either in RAW or in JPEG format. DJI Fly will automatically stitch a JPEG panorama, as you can see from the line on top, labeled Output. We can then choose the exposure mode. If we click on the icon on the bottom right, we toggle from Auto Exposure to Manual, labeled as Pro. In my opinion, Auto tends to overexpose big time. Therefore, I always adjust the EV value by at least one negative stop. When using manual exposure, we can access all the settings needed from a single window. This is very handy. We can set the ISO and the shutter speed values independently, and then by clicking on the little icon on the bottom left, we can set the white balance, the file format for the individual photos, and the storage location. I strongly recommend using manual white balance to avoid shift of colors. With all previous DJI models, I would only use RAW files, but with the Mini 3, JPEG can also be a good choice, we will see later why. If we choose the sphere mode, the drone will shoot 26 photos in rapid succession, practically a 360 degree view over 3 rows of photos. 180 degrees mode shoots 21 photos. In the wide angle mode, 9 photos are taken, 3 rows and 3 columns. Finally, vertical consists of a column of 3 photos. While shooting the images, the drone will rotate and tilt to optimize the amount of overlap between each shot. While shooting, under the shutter icon, a numeric indicator will show the progression of the process in percentage. Note that after having shot all photos, he will be still busy for a few more seconds, as the app is teaching the automatic JPEG panorama.
The file will be also saved on the memory disk. There will be two different folders, one named Panorama, containing the individual file of each shot, if this option was chosen, while another folder named 100 Media will contain the auto-generated files. With previous models, I never taken the auto-generated JPEG file seriously, but I must admit that the quality of the ones made by the Mini 3 Pro is excellent, and they also respond extremely well to post-processing. Let's have a look. In my opinion, these auto-generated files are so good that they can be used by most users on most occasions. In sphere panels, as usual, the top of the sky is missing, and the software extrapolates a fake one. So, the Mini 3 at the moment is not taking advantage of the extra tilt upwards of the gimbal and the ability to take vertical photos. In the note released with the latest firmware update, there was a reference to the possibility to use portrait mode for panorama, but it was probably a typo, as it was soon replaced by other notes talking about vertical hyperlapses instead of vertical panorama. And indeed, if we try shooting a panel with a camera in portrait mode, it doesn't seem to work, at least for the moment. With all other drones, I save the individual photos as raw files, post-process them, and stitch the images into a panorama using software like On One Photo Raw or PTGUI. At the moment, there is no lens profile yet on my raw processing software for the Mini 3, and the raw files have a quite complex vignette that is simple to adjust in individual photos, but often creates color banding in panorama. But the JPEG files on the Mini 3 are excellent, and using them is a good alternative for users experiencing issues with the RAW files. On all automated panoramas, I'm now using the auto-generated JPEG. They are that good. I only use the individual photos for manual panoramas when I want a format with a specific number of photos, or to use 48 megapixel single photos for insane final resolution, or else to take advantage of the vertical photos and the extended tilt of the gimbal. I'm not going to go too deep on all the different possibilities offered by the extra upward tilt of the gimbal and by the vertical photo shooting, like a full sphere manual panorama including the top of the sky, as they are very advanced technique. But I will show two very simple examples using these two features. In this case, I'm using the extra tilt of the gimbal for two columns of five landscape photos. To get a vertical 180 degrees view of the scene. Here I take two row or three vertical photos each.
for a rectangular panel. Click on this link to watch my beginner guide on the Mini 3 Pro. For more advanced users, let me know in the comment below if you are interested in a video for panel heroes about manual foot sphere panels and other dangerous adventures. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.